Hello, my name is Kemal Kippel, and I'm excited to share over two dozen digital workplace updates that you're going to be able to leverage in your own environments. Keep watching the video as we'll share not only a new product launch, but also community highlight that's got everyone excited on social media. And by the way, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you like, subscribe to our channel as we continue to bring you the latest digital workplace update. To Lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world-class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace? So let's dive right in. First and foremost is Microsoft Loop. Microsoft re recently shared a video of how uh, Loop tasks are going to sync across different applications, whether you're looking at Outlook, uh, emails, uh, you're looking at Outlook through um, sending out invites, or looking at tasks uh, th through Microsoft Teams, where you will make live updates using uh, Microsoft Loop as well as the same tasks in other applications like OneNote as well. Each of these loop components will allow you to sync tasks across the different applications and be able to share those with your colleagues as well on Microsoft Teams. Pretty fantastic when you start thinking, thinking about the asynchronous ability to add tasks, update tasks, and keep your team informed. Pretty excited about this update and looking forward to using it more and more in our environments. That's everything for Microsoft Loop. Moving on to SharePoint. Microsoft is releasing a new app site previously known as the App Catalog, which will help you as a SharePoint or global administrator to quickly get started distributing custom apps, uh, as well as acquiring applications in your tenant to extend functionality of SharePoint, Teams, and Viva connections. You can now use the new apps site to store and distribute solutions in a streamlined and modernized manner uh, and experience. What we're seeing here is the ability to enable applications, uh, not just distribute them, but also enable them in your tenant. So you're able to enable custom applications built either by your development team or organizations that you trust. SharePoint administrators can browse and install apps that meet specific business objectives directly from the SharePoint store. As well, administrators will be able to review the request from site owners and choose to approve or decline these apps. There's a little bit more administrative functionality coming out. Uh, you have the ability to add to all sites or stop adding to new sites, depending on the functionality that the app provides. You also have the ability to add to Microsoft Teams, and last but not least, be able to update SharePoint store apps with the, the new versions that are coming out for the store apps or go to the classic experience. Next up is you have the possibility now to see important boosted news and announcements on Viva Connections dashboard. Authors can use the boost feature on news posts to highlight important announcements to employees. The top news card is now available for private preview customers and will become generally available to all customers in the first quarter of 2022. Moving on, there's some great updates from SharePoint Syntax. SharePoint Syntax is providing pre-built models for invoices and receipts. This gives you updated models and experiences for understanding and extracting uh, content metadata from invoices as well as receipts. SharePoint Syntax is also making it easier to visualize information extracted from your files. So we're adding a pre-configured tile view that can automatically set or selected when a model is applied to a library. Probably one of my favorite uh, announcements that recently came out is a SharePoint Syntax content, content Center site ready to deploy instructional SharePoint site template designed to help you better understand SharePoint Syntax capabilities. You'll be introduced to the tools and the information you'll need to create and train your own models. You'll then be able to use this site as a central content re repository or as a control center for managing your own SharePoint Syntax models. Another new template that's being launched is the Contracts Management Site Template, which is a ready to deploy and customizable SharePoint Site Template that helps your organization maximize the value of SharePoint Syntax. This site is designed to let you create a professional site to manage, process, track the status of contracts in your organization. In other SharePoint news, you also have the ability to edit the image tag column. If you remember from our last digital workplace updates, you have the ability to um, incorporate image tags as you uploaded images to SharePoint. And there's an AI generated tags that were being 
used to describe your images. Now you also have the ability to edit those AI generated tags. Uh, so you have the ability to do that. And that means you can provide feedback on how, what the quality of the AI generated tags are and also add your own organization specific tags in here. In the content assembly, there, we're also adding the ability to associate taxonomy term sets and terms as inputs for modern template placeholders. Next feature that we have is the advanced search with custom columns. End users will be able to add site columns and other queryable columns from the current document library view into the advanced search file by clicking more options. And our first community highlight is the Microsoft Edge add-on SharePoint formatter by Sergey Sergeev, SharePoint MVP, who's built an incredible um, add-on that's being loved by many and has been very popular recently on LinkedIn as well. So I want to call out uh, some of the features that are available through the SharePoint formatter. You have the ability to do live preview as you type. So if you're looking to tweak your Microsoft list, this is a must have. Um, you also have IntelliSense suggestions based on column or view formatting schema, CSS styles, replaceable tokens. You also have JSON validation with error messages in the editor. You've got line numbers, you've got hotkeys. You have the ability to switch between the default and enhanced editors as well. Would highly encourage you all to check out Sergey's Microsoft Edge add-on that also now supports Microsoft list formatting. Moving on to our Microsoft Viva updates. There's one major one uh, in, in the last month that we want to share with you, and this was Microsoft bringing Glint into Viva. We're excited to share that Microsoft is finally bringing Glint solution into Microsoft Viva to make listening and acting on employee feedback an integral part of how businesses engage and develop their talent in the new era of hybrid work. There's been a number of investments recently um, that we want to highlight and make sure you had visibility into it. Ultimately, um, what you want to be able to understand is get an executive view of the voice of the employee so that it can serve as action platforms. That's the goal here. Companies that want an end-to-end -end employee listing system don't necessarily need a new vendor anymore. If they're a Microsoft shop, they can get an enterprise survey analytics platform that employees will use immediately. Second, companies that use Viva today will be able to match Viva Insights data, how much time you're spending in meetings, how productive you are, against direct employee feedback, engagement, and suggestion data. The data scientists that analyze Glint data will be sitting next to the data scientists that access Viva Insights data. They'll start to see what behaviors, meetings, and other activities drive employee retention, improve diversity, and contribute to well-being. Third, this vastly improves Microsoft Viva learning capabilities. Glint is not only a survey and a listening system, it also delivers action plans and developmental rec recommendations. Within a year or so, I bet this is all integrated into Viva Learning, making it easier than ever to learn what you need to know when employees are unhappy. Right now, this market of listening to employees is very hot as quite a few companies have acquired and adopted new platforms from Qualtrics, ServiceNow, to even Microsoft. So make sure you pay attention to the space and make sure you're experimenting and leveraging these tools internally. Microsoft Teams updates. Quite a few updates here in Microsoft Teams. We'll start with, uh, there's a new update where you have the ability to enable Teams DLP policies to protect chats in Teams. With this capability, all your existing and new policies will automatically protect files shared in Teams private chat and channel messages. Additionally, when users are protected as a part of the Teams DLP policy, they can initiate a one-on-one -on -one chat. The chat conversation is also protected by the Teams DLP policy. You will apply with this capability the same DLP policy rules and actions on the associated OneDrive for Business folder that stores any documents shared by a chat participant. Please note, if the recipient of a message is covered by the DLP policy and the sender is not covered under any Teams DLP policy, then there will be no protection applied. Make sure you pay attention to that one. Announcing the public preview of tenant level analytics for Power Automate Cloud Flows. Pretty cool that admins now have the ability to monitor usage, maker activities, inventory of cloud flows across your environment. This is a recently new uh, kind of extension of the center of excellence that was provided in the past that they're now starting to integrate into out of the box reports. Highly, highly encourage your organization using Power Automate 
to leverage this tenant level analytics. Recently, Microsoft also shared some of the best practices for successful large team meetings. So as you extend the meeting to a larger audience, it's important to take appropriate steps to make the meetings more effective. To have a successful meeting, there's a number of different roles your employees, your team are playing from organizers to producers, IT professionals, to presenters, attendees, and moderators. So understanding and defining those roles is very important. Making sure prior to the actual meeting itself, you pre-stage it with things such as polls and QA, and then of course, schedule a dry run. It is also recommended that IT administrators and IT support staff monitor during meetings, ensure that all the connectivity, network connectivity principles are being followed, and then also IT admins can closely examine the real-time data telemetry to monitor the event, identify any possible issues in its source. Uh, what we are including here also is guidance for delivering virtual events. There is a virtual event playbook that I'd highly encourage you if you're hosting large, large meetings. Microsoft now is also displaying the local time and user profile cards, which is awesome. So as long as in Outlook you've set up and configure your region, your current time zone, what that will mean is your employees will now have the ability uh, starting February 14th. Uh, this should already be out in your tenant, and if you're listening to this recording, is to be able to display the profile owner's local time and the time difference between you and them. So right under their contact, you'll be able to see if an individual is three hours behind, six hours behind, or within the same time zone. There are new breakout rooms features that are being launched. Highly encourage you to check those out. Everything from assigning users to rooms, adding, deleting rooms, opening, closing rooms, reassigning users to rooms, setting timers for the rooms, uh, or even joining open rooms and setting announcements. Make sure you look at all the new and exciting features that are available for Microsoft Teams breakout rooms. For Microsoft Power Platform updates, a number of updates here that I want to share. Uh, <clears throat> I think first and foremost is the quick measures using natural language. You can now take an existing Quick measure, for example, on the left hand side, you'll see a suggestion. What is a rolling 28 day average of sales? This is something you could input yourself and say, here's something that I want to try to calculate, a quick measure. And then it actually provides you the DAX query and actually share with you what that format is that you can then leverage that in your own uh, Power BI reports. Pretty cool. And last but not least is the ability for enabling and use of mobile offline first in your Power Apps. Users now have the ability to do this. Uh, first and foremost, you want to make sure as an administrator, you allow applications to have offline capabilities. And then as a user, you can also now enable this where it'll actually download the updates and then you're able to leverage the application in offline mode before you get an internet connection if you're remote somewhere and be able to leverage that and be able to push those updates to the cloud and to ba uh, back to your data source. Pretty fantastic. Beyond the digital workplace and just broader um, updates here, expanding into Azure and other platforms, I wanted to share with you that uh, Microsoft has recently shared um, their always on project for mission critical workloads. This conceptual architecture illustrates how different reliability tiers and underlying business requirements influence the target architecture. It's it's a common request that we all get. You know, tell us what good looks looks like. Um, organizations that are seeking guidance and reference deployments will benefit from this greatly on how to scale their applications to be always on. And as I was mentioning earlier at the beginning, Microsoft has also launched in public preview Cloud Knox permissions management. This is basically an application tool that continuously monitors and remediates your permission risks to make sure your critical cloud resources are secure. Highly encourage everyone to check this out if you're using um, Azure, if you're using AWS and other applications. Uh, it allows you to automate least privileged access, allows you to streamline anomaly detection to accelerate incident response as well. In the world of Yammer, uh, yeah, you now have the ability to allow a Q&A reply to be upvoted to ensure a helpful answer appears at the top of the thread. There were some 
recent announcements uh, for Azure DevOps uh, updates that were provided. You can now, everything from being able to copy a dashboard to a different team, the same team or a different project, the team and the query configuration is updating the new dashboard, which kind of further minimizes the work required to build some of the dashboards from scratch from multiple teams. You also see the, in addition, you, they're, they're also including multiple updates to Azure pipelines. On YAML pipelines, for example, setting up deny access to all pipelines as a default for protected resources. Azure pipelines will post a neutral status back to GitHub when it decides not to run a validation build because of the path exclusion rule. And there's much, much more. Highly encourage you to check those out. On the Azure AD Connect side, you can now synchronize same users, groups, and contacts from a single Active Directory to multiple Azure AD tenants. These tenants can be different Azure environments, such as Azure China environment or the Azure government environment, but they could also be the same Azure environment, such as two tenants that are both in Azure commercial. It is supported to have different sync scopes and different sync rules for different tenants. However, only one Azure tenant sync can be configured to write back to an Active Directory for the same object. This includes device and group write back, as well as hybrid exchange configurations. And these features can only be configured in one tenant. The only exception here is a password write back. Recently, there was a breaking change announced for the Microsoft Graph, Graph Tasks API that was in beta. The Microsoft Graph beta endpoint, uh, these changes uh, were affected February 28th, 2022. Uh, some of the announcements, some of the changes that have been announced is that renaming the personal properties property of base task resource to viewpoint, renaming reminder date time to a reminder date time with the T capitalized, renaming body property name to text body, and changing the property type from item body to string. In the future, also be support for HTML body on base task resource. Make sure you update your code to rename these references to reflect the renamed properties. Community highlight here uh, from Tobias Zimmer, Zimmerman, Zimmergren. Uh, huge fan of uh, Tobias's work and his blog. Uh, he recently um, announced, I believe about a month ago, being able to track your secure score over time in Azure and walks through the entire process, uh, which I absolutely love the score fluctuates as new recommendations become available. So being able to see how you're tracking and how your secure score is tracking is very helpful. And these are about a couple of dozen updates to Digital Workplace that affect you and your day-to-day -day productivity. Thank you so much for subscribing and listening, and make sure you comment below on your favorite update.